Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for everything we have learned already. We pray, Lord, that all these things will be reaching on the table of every heart. And Lord, the passion, the fire, the fervency, the pursuit, you grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that any passion we have lost, any fire we have lost, any commitment we have lost, you restore to everyone abundantly in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to everyone, even tonight. And we pray that the grace to abide in the word, to live like the word teaches us, and to move on in everything, every action, according to your word, your grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. Members, ministers, parents, children, long-time believers and newcomers we pray we'll follow your word step by step day after day in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray you must give me another amen before you sit down god bless you we're coming to galatians chapter 2 and today we're looking at verses 11, 12, 13, and 14. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. And then in verse 12, it says, For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Then in verse 13, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Now in verse 14, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We thank the Lord for the passage of scripture we're looking at today. It's one of the evidences that the Bible is the word of God. Normally when you write the story, the history of great men, and you write their autobiography you do not put some of these things there that might bring them to bad light why should there be any disagreement between barnabas and paul that's written in the bible why should there be any kind of dissembling or dissimulation in the action of peter that's written in the bible how should paul confront Peter, because of what he has done, that's written in the Bible. And we need to remember that whatsoever things were written at all time, they were written for our learning, that we, through the comfort and the patience of scriptures, might have hope. So today, we're looking at preserving the truth of the gospel at all costs. Preserving. And there is what Paul the Apostle did. He saw that the truth of the gospel was being turned upside down. He saw that the truth of the gospel was being eroded into. And he wanted and he had to defend the gospel, the truth of the gospel. Why? Do we have to preserve the truth of the gospel? Because if the gospel is changed, a mutilated gospel cannot save. 
If the gospel is changed, a modified gospel cannot save. If the gospel is changed, a watered down gospel cannot save. That's the reason why, because Paul the Apostle was interested in the salvation of people, both Jews and Gentiles. So he had to defend the truth of the gospel, preserve the truth of the gospel, so that this gospel will remain as God has given us. And it remains as God has given us, then people will hear the gospel, the true gospel, the perfect gospel, the heavenly gospel, the saving gospel, the transforming gospel, and the gospel that changes not. And so those who hear will be able to respond to that gospel. They will give their lives to the Lord and they will be saved as it was then. So it should be today that every one of us ministers, every one of us preachers, every one of us leaders, every one of us soul winners should preserve the truth of the gospel at all costs. Preserving the truth of the gospel at all costs. There are three things we're looking at today in the message. Number one, the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation. That's what happened to Peter. He was a pillar in the kingdom, a pillar in the church, a pillar in the New Testament. And now the pillar was shifting from the foundation and that's very dangerous and the same thing with us today any preacher well-known preacher any preacher a preacher that is known all over the world or maybe all over our nation maybe all over our state maybe in our church if it sheets from the foundation that's very dangerous because many will backslide and many will lose their faith and their hope in the lord the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation number two the dissembly of partners shaking by fear after peter kind of dissembled he left the place where he was before when those jews came from james Barnabas and others, they also dissembled with him. And they said, if Peter is afraid of those people coming from Jerusalem, who am I? And so we have the dissembling of partners shaken by fear. Fear of man is very, very dangerous. The fear of man will bring a snare. The fear of a man, a woman, high people great people forceful people the fear of their face and the fear of their comment what will they say what will they do how will they react how will they respond that fear the fear of anyone in our lives will bring us near and lead us astray and not only lead us astray a leader's sin it's a leading sin. It will lead other people astray to you. The dissembling of partners shaken by fear. Number three, the defense by Paul. Steadfast in the faith. The defense by Paul. Paul the apostle. Thank God we have a person like Paul the apostle that when everybody was going the other direction, he could stand alone and he could stand for the truth. Thank God today you can be a man like that because if everybody fell, or will stand. If everybody compromised, who will be conqueror? If everybody went astray, who will stand on the truth of the word of God? It's good for you in the time of the Old Testament. There was a Daniel, a Daniel that was stand alone. And then his three companions and friends go follow him. In the time of the New Testament, we have this man, Paul the Apostle, and he could stand. And because he stood, the word is now preserved served for us i pray the lord will make a paul out of you and make you stand whatever is happening around you in jesus name the defense by paul steadfast 
in the faith. Let's come to number one. Number one, we have the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. There's the pillar of truth. Apart from a human being, apart from a preacher, apart from an apostle being a pillar, the pillar of truth. That's the pillar on which we build the temple of truth. I will build everything we want to build because the temple of truth, the truth of the gospel must stand on a pillar, the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. Number two, the instability of some pillars in the temple. The temple is the church. The temple is the whole thing that we have under the saving grace of God. And there are some of the pillars there, some of the preachers there, some of the pastors there, some of the people there that were shaking. They were unstable. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. The instability of some pillars in the temple. Number three, the importance of steadfast perseverance without timidity. The importance of holding on and standing fast and remaining solid, unshakable, steadfast perseverance without timidity. Let's look at number one is the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. We're told in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. First Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 15, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. The church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. If the church is anything at all, the church should be holding forth and holding out the truth of the gospel. And the church then becomes the depository, becomes the place where you deposit the truth, the whole truth. And if you're looking for the truth, you come to the church. And the church is the pillar of truth and is the ground of truth. And those who are preachers then in the church, must stand like pillars and stand for the truth of the word of God. In Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and he touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put the perfect word. I have put the fullness of the word. I put the complete revelation in your mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. What did that make Jeremiah? Having the truth, loving the truth, possessing the truth preaching the truth, announcing the truth, putting forth the truth of the word of God. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar. Without the truth, without the gospel, Jeremiah could not be a pillar. Without the truth, without the revelation, Peter could not be a pillar. What makes anyone a dependable pillar? What makes anyone a standing pillar? What makes anyone a pillar to be reckoned with in the church of the living God is that he has the truth, the true gospel, the word of God, the gospel, 
and he retains and he holds on to that truth and the lord said for behold i have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land against the kings of judah against the princes thereof against the priests thereof and against the people of the land let's come to first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 10. first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 according to the grace of god which is given unto me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builders thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon look at verse 11 in verse 11 it tells us for all the foundation can no man lead and that is laid which is christ jesus is that foundation in christ christ as savior christ alone without circumcision christ a sanctifier christ alone without the ceremony of the old testament christ the baptizer in the holy ghost christ alone without drinking from river jordan christ the healer christ alone without all the herbs and everything christ the redeemer christ the redeemer without other people becoming a co-redemptor or redeemer with him christ other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ and then we're told in second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 19 in second timothy chapter 2 verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god stand the show having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of christ depart from iniquity depart from corruption depart from corrupting the word of god and depart from corrupting their own lives the immutability of the saving pillar of truth let's come to number two now number two the instability of some pillars in the temple the instability of some pillars in the temple we're coming to galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 11 but when peter was come to antioch i withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed that wasn't expected of peter the same thing with us any of us who are pastors who are preachers who are overseers, who are leaders, who are workers, and who are being taught the truth. The Lord expects that we'll stand by the truth, stand for the truth, stand for the truth, and present the truth at every opportunity to everyone we come across. But as it was in the Old Testament, it also spilled over. To the New Testament, you remember Ophni and Phinehas, they derailed. You remember Nadab and Abihu, they derailed. You remember Aaron, he didn't stand on the word, and the people were led into idolatry. You remember many people that have gone away from the truth of the word, and now we come to the New Testament. And Peter himself writing his epistle, second epistle of Peter, chapter 2, he said, There were false prophets in those days, and there shall be false teachers among you. Unfortunately, Peter himself fell into that kind of situation. It was a situation of compromise a situation of not being strong a situation of fearing man more than the messiah and fearing the people around him more than the lord god of heaven now 
to point accusing finger to Peter is one thing and for you to understand in your own moment of confrontation in your own moment of uh, when people come uh, that you respect and you honor and then you have a stand to take and you have the words to defend for you to be able to stand it will take really a good experience of salvation a good experience of sanctification a good experience of baptism and power and courage and boldness in the holy ghost but now we're told about peter that he was to be blamed look at verse 12 in verse 12 for before that certain came from james that's james in jerusalem he did each of the gentiles he did each of the gentiles no big deal already when god called peter to the house of cornelius already he was there and he spent some days with them he slept in the house they provided gentiles he ate the food they provided and they knew already that the lord had broken down that middle wall of partition they knew already that peter went to the house of cornelius and he edged there they even challenged him look at acts chapter 11 reading from verse 2 acts chapter 11 we're reading from verse 2 it says there and when peter was come unto jerusalem they that were of the circumcision contended with him was a pity they contended about a non-essential they contended about eating food they contended about what goes in and then will you pass it out and jesus had told them before he left he said it is not what enters into the man like food like drink that corrupts the man defiles the man it is what comes out of the man now they challenged him they said peter Oh, what have you done? You've gone to the uncircumcised Gentiles and you have eaten with them. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. In verse 4, verse 4 tells us what Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them look at verse 8 in verse 8 but i said not so lord for nothing come on unclean as at any time entered into my mouth verse 9 and then it says in verse 9 but the voice answered me again from heaven that should have settled it once and forever the voice answered me again from heaven what god has cleansed that call not thou come on then in verse 10 in verse 10 and this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven and then in verse 11 it says in verse 11 and behold immediately there were three men already come unto the house where i was sent from caesarea unto me verse 